Welcome everybody. Today, uh, first off, uh, I'm Melissa. I work for Genomia Australia and I am a educator, sales educator for Genomia Australia. Today, we are going to go through a few different techniques you can use with your Genomi machines and decorative stitches. So a lot of you may have stitches on your machine that you don't necessarily use for everyday use. And today we're going to show you a few different feet and techniques you can use those into the work that you do. So we are going to work through the feet that you can see here on screen and the attachments. So I've got a number of different techniques I'm gonna show you, but the first thing I'm gonna run through are the feet. Now, all of the Janome feet do have a letter if you attended yesterday, we mentioned a few letters into the information yesterday. Today, we have more letters of feet that we're going to go through. And don't panic if you don't have a pen and paper at this minute. We will send out to your local retailer all the information about today's session. So you can contact them and they will be able to send you through all of the information. So the first foot that we're going to use is this little one over here. So this is a border guide foot and this is the FB foot. So it looks like a clear foot with little wings. Then we're going to go through the ribbon and sequins foot. So this one looks a little bit funny at the front compared to a standard foot and it is the RS foot. Then we're using the three-way cording foot. So it's got little bumps on the front here. And then we're going to feed some cords through while we stitch. Then we have the circular sewing attachment. So this one will actually sew circles for you without you having to really do very much. And then we're going to use the F and the F2 feet. These both are plastic feet, but you can use them for different methods. So we're going to go through all of those. So I'll move all of these off to the side for the minute. And as we go through, we're going to work with the Continental M7 machine. And I'm going to show you on screen a number of functions that you can do with your machines. Don't panic if yours doesn't have, if you don't have this exact same machine, you'll still be able to work with a lot of the functions and a lot of the icons will marry through to other machines as well. So I'm just attaching this little foot. Now this foot, before I attached it, I should have showed you. This little foot here has markings across the foot, as well as a marking that runs horizontal. So this horizontal line is the needle drop position. So we can line up the very edge of our fabric with this line. And then we know that we're going to start in the same spot every time. You might have a line marked that you need to start sewing at. It might be a join in a seam, or it might be a, a marked with a marker. You can line up with this line, and that means your needle drop is going to drop exactly in the position. We then have these markings here, okay, which are at the nine millimeter or seven millimeter markings. So this foot is a nine millimeter foot for the nine mil machine. But if you have a seven millimeter machine, your markings between here and here will be seven millimeters. And that is how wide the decorative, decorative stitches or the zigzag stitches can go. So we also then in the middle, just trying to get the right light for you, maybe there, right in the middle of the foot here, we have three little red markings. And these ones are left, middle, and right needle drop positions. So if your stitch is going to start on the right, the middle or the left, you can line up and make sure that it's in line for you. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'll pop that one to the side. And today I am using um, high contrast thread. So again, you don't need to do the same. Normally you would work with... Can you turn the machine off? Yep. Normally you would work with either a match or a contrast thread. For today, I'm working with a definite contrast thread so that we can see, so, so that you can see where we're going. Okay. 
So as well as the markings on my foot, I have markings on my needle plate. So this line here, if you take a look at any of your needle plates, there's a line that runs straight through the middle of the hole where the needle goes. That one there is your needle drop marking on the actual needle plate as well. So I'm going to take my fabric, line it up with that marking. And now I've drawn just a line down the center. I'm going to fill this with different stitches, but I've only drawn one line. So if I wanted to fill every width across, I don't need to mark everything. I can just mark my original and then stitch. I don't need to mark this one necessarily, but for today I have, just so that I wasn't guessing. So I'm lining this marking up with my center of the foot. And I'm just going to lower my foot down into position. So you can see, you can just see through here that my fabric is sitting underneath of this red line and it's sitting on top of this needle plate marking line. What was that one? All right. So I'm going to change over to my screen and I'm going to show you some of the decorative stitches that you may have. Now this machine does have a lot of decorative stitches but when we go into the stitches it groups them together. So if I knew that I wanted to do some applique I could quite simply select on my applique option. If I know that I would like to do a satin stitch I've got a satin stitch option. So all of your stitches here are grouped I'm going to go into the decorative, for example, to begin with. And now I have in my decorative, on the screen here, it's showing me one slash eight. So I actually have eight pages of decorative stitches to choose from. And on this one, I can scroll through. On some machines, you might have slightly different uh, locations for where you can scroll through your stitches. And I'm going to select this little stitch here. Okay, so it's actually showing me a full row of the stitches and it's telling me my F foot. Now I'm using the FB, the border guide, so it's still a plastic foot. It still has the same opening in the center. And I am just then going to start sewing. Now I've got my foot control plugged in and I'm going to sew down the length of this line. Now, when you're sewing decorative stitches, it is suggested to sew at about a medium speed. If you sew too quickly, oh, sorry, I forgot to change my screen. If you sew too quickly, you might end up with the fabric moving on you too much or your stitch may change its shape. So when you're doing something like this, where you maybe want to mirror image a stitch to either side, if you use a medium speed, then your fabric and your thread and your stitching has time to all work together and create the perfect stitch. Okay, so you can see the stitching coming out the back of here. It's forming that little stitch for me. And on the screen of my machine, if I change back here, on the screen of my machine, I have that it's a nine millimeter stitch. So if I was working with a seven millimeter machine, this one would say seven millimeters. We also have a stitch length of 2.5 here. So you can actually change these if you like. So even though the machine may have 50 decorative stitches or a hundred decorative stitches or however many your machine has, they are as the preset from factory. However, once you start changing those, you may get a lot more variation. All right, now I'll just change back to my machine here. And hopefully you can see the button still up in this top corner. So we have a couple of things as well with decorative stitching. With decorative stitching, sometimes we need to do an exact number of stitches. And other times, like in this case, we just wanna to get to the edge of the fabric. So I don't wanna stitch off the edge of my fabric. So what I'm going to do, and I've just slowed down for the second, just with my foot control. But what I wanna do when I'm getting really close to the edge of this finishing, I'm going to press just once my reverse button, which looks like a U-turn symbol. So we're going to get really close to the edge of here. And then I'm just going to press 
my reverse and you can see it's just sewing up and down. So it's locking off. Now this machine automatically lifts the foot for me so I can take my fabric out and I have a row of stitches on the left and to the right. Okay. Now I did forget to mention earlier, I have already put some stabilizer on the back of this fabric. So I've got a iron on cutaway. So I'm leaving that in there and this is going to sew into a cushion anyway. So that will be fine to stay in. So I have a single row of stitches. Now I want to do a second row of stitches and this is where our little foot is helpful for us. So we can take this row and place it into the left or the right wing of this foot. So before I was lining up with the center, now I'm going to move it over and line it up in this left hand side of the foot. If I wanted my stitches to be directly beside each other, I could come in and the left hand side of this stitching, I could line up with this side. So then the stitches would be right beside each other. However, I'm going to give a little bit of a gap. Now I know that my top edge is where I started. So I'm just lining up again with my needle plate and my foot and I'm putting the stitch into this left-hand side of the foot. So rather than having to sit and mark out my fabric constantly, I can just select the, uh, or draw up the first row of stitches and then start stitching. Now I'm just going to, grab, if I change back, I'm just going to grab a little stitch that now has a direction. So if I was to stitch this one, my curves are going to be on my left and my points are going to be on my right. I want to mirror this stitch. So we actually have a little icon that looks like this one that mirror images our stitch. So we're going to select that one. Now you can see my curves are going to be on the right and my points are going to be on the left. So that's going to make a lovely scallop down the side of this particular stitch. All right, I'll flick back so you can see this one so, and we're going to start. Now all of our decorative stitches are automatically giving us a lock off at the start and the end. You'll notice I'm not needing to reverse on the reverse button or to lock off. All of them come pre-programmed with a lock off at the beginning before the stitch starts. Okay. So this is feeding through. You can see here, all I'm doing is I'm watching this left-hand side of the foot. I'm not actually watching your, the needle, which takes a little bit of practice because most sewing we do, we're always watching the needle but I'm actually watching this row of stitching feeding down the left-hand side of the foot. And I'm making sure that I'm keeping it nice and straight. You'll also notice I'm not pushing my fabric in and I'm not pulling it out at the back. The machine is automatically feeding the fabric through for me. And on this particular machine, it actually drops the feed dogs away when we don't have fabric under there and brings them back up on our first stitch. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute but it's so that we get the best about amount of clearance at the very beginning. So we get all of our fabric, if we had wadding or anything like that under there, all of it can slide in without touching our feed dog. And then on the very first stitch, it picks up, clamps the whole lot together and moves it through. Okay, so it's giving us a really, really good feed. So you can see this stitch now coming out the back. All right. Now, if I know that I would like to finish after this many repeats, okay, so I may have counted and I forgot to start counting because I was talking, but if I know there's a little lock off button, so it looks like a bullet on your machine. Once you've got to the amount of repeats you would like, if you press this, it will finish the last repeat. So it's finished there and it's stopped and I can move away and I've got a completed row. So instead of with this one, it only gave us a half of the leaf. It didn't finish off the other half because it was gonna fall off the edge. So that's the reverse. It finishes immediately. Whereas your lock off finishes the pattern repeat before it then locks off. So it's tied off so that my thread isn't gonna fall apart, but it's finished the whole row before I get to that point. All right, now I will show you 
if I take the same, this same row of stitches and I mirror image this design back to standard and I pop it under the opposite side. So this time I'm taking this row of stitches and I'm popping it under the left hand, right hand side, sorry, right hand side of my foot. I haven't had a great week with my lefts and rights. <laughs> so I've got my stitching now under the right hand side of my foot and my row that I've just stitched is now out here. I'm lining up again with the same horizontal so that all of my movements the same and I've mirrored my stitch back to standard. So now the scallops are going to come down and the pointy scallop is coming in toward the decorative and the curve is on the outside. So we'll just sew a little bit of this so that you can see how easily this foot can be used. Now I use this foot for a lot of different things other than just decorative stitching as well. It's a great foot if you do uh, hems that maybe are deeper than a standard uh, foot. You can line up the folded edge, of course, with these markings and then stitch. If you like to self-bind placemats or little quilts or something like that, you can also use this style of foot to make sure that you're level on your outer edge at the same time that you're stitching in the ditch or to hold that down in place. Now you can see the stitching coming out the back of here. And I'll change over, I've got a third camera here that maybe you can, there we go. You can see the stitch sitting in this side here. And as I'm feeding, the stitch is coming out here. And you can see this gap and this gap right here are the same because I'm using the guides on the foot to feed my stitch through so that it's coming out equal. All right. Now I'm watching a little bit more careful this time so I can finish off in the same number. So remembering to get the same number. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got eight little scallops. So when it starts to stitch my eight scallop, I'm going to select my lock off button. So the lock off button is the little one that looks like a bullet. So what are we at? We're at number seven here. So it's nearly finished number seven. Once it finishes number seven and it's on to number eight. All right, so that's just starting number eight. I can press my lock off button. And it's now flashing at me. You might just be able to see the flashing. Once it gets to the end of this stitch, it's automatically stopped for me and finished. And oh, let's push that through to the back. And you can see there, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. You can see there, go backwards. It's given me the scallops on either side. I'm trying to get my fingers right. It's got the scallops on either side and the decorative stitch through the middle. Okay, let's come back to this one. All right. So that's a border guide foot. Now with the all of the feet I'm showing you today as well, when you buy the feet, they come on a little backing card like this. And on the back of the backing card, all of the information is there for you. So even though I've just mentioned uh, about the applications the foot can do, you have a lot of other options that your feet can do uh, and you don't need to necessarily remember. You can look at the instructional sheet that comes with it. Okay. So now let's set up for our ribbon and sequins. So the ribbon and sequins foot looks a little bit, or well, looks exactly like this, but a little bit like a, uh, some of the older machines may have had a blind hem foot that had a big white piece on the front. So the ribbon and sequence foot actually has this little gap through the front here, okay, just where my finger is. And you can feed, of course, ribbons and sequins into this point here. It then holds them level and comes out through the middle of the foot here and underneath. All right, so if I take my ribbon, there's no curve underneath. Uh, the, the foot itself has just little markings. So this is helping to grab at your fabric rather than it being just completely flush underneath of the foot. And this little, uh, this, so the ribbon comes through this white part 
under this metal part here with the first part of the teeth and then under the stitching. So we'll feed this one in. So I usually cut my ribbon onto a slight angle just to help feed it in. And you do have three different locations here that you can feed into. So depending on the width of your ribbon, you have quite a large one at the bottom. Then just above it is a medium. And then in this middle, at the very top one here is a small. So this small one comes out here and then you tuck it under the metal. Okay, all of those options are listed on the packaging as well. So I like to feed it through my foot just before I put my foot on and then I can pull the ribbon back. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just going to attach the foot. Now all of the feet, as I have previously mentioned, if you've come to the other days, have a little bar and they just clip down. So they're really easy to attach. And for this one, I'm going to take my piece of fabric and I'm going to place my fabric under the foot and under the ribbon. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to use my needle plate markings to line up this time. So on our needle plate uh, itself, we have inches at the back and millimeters at the front. If I flick over to this camera here, you can probably see them, they'll be upside down, but you can see them here. So we've got inches at the back, millimeters at the front. So I'm just gonna line up with my one inch marking right here. Okay. And I'm going to lower my foot down. Oh, before I do that, I'm just gonna pull back on some of that ribbon. I usually like to leave a little bit of a tail of the ribbon on the back of there. I'm gonna change my stitch, yeah. So I'm going to use a stitch that jumps over this ribbon. You could stitch onto the ribbon if you like. You can use a stitch that jumps over and, and um, stitches it down either side. So if I change back to my screen here, I'm going to use a stitch like this one here. Okay. Now again, because my machine is a nine millimeter machine, it's automatically set to nine millimeters. Of course, I've got the option to adjust the width or the length if I wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it at that. And again, you could contrast your, you could contrast your thread or you could match. I'm gonna contrast so that you can see. Now, as I feed through on this one, because it's a medium width ribbon, I'm holding it up so it guides into the medium slot. If I had a wider, I'd leave it down. And if I had the narrow, I'd be popping it through the top of here. So I'm just going to start doing a couple of little stitches here. And then I will show you an example that you could stitch with this. Now, with your decorative stitches, you do need to be mindful that the fabric, as you can see, is moving through on its own, okay? So we don't need to pull back on our fabric as we're working with this. We just need to allow the machine to feed through and stitch down, okay? And I won't bore you with ages of this. I'll just do a little bit of it. And I've got a great little sample that I can show you with this technique already completed. So when the machine goes into that reverse motion on your fabric that bunches up a little bit, that's yes. completely normal. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I even like when, so when you are doing decorative stitch, sometimes I will give my fabric a little bit of extra um, here rather than letting it just fall off my machine sometimes i may let it hold up and certainly i'll get to that when we're using the circular sewer i find it a bit easier to do that method but it's so you, you don't want to necessarily hold it back otherwise it is going to distort your stitch so allow it to have a little bit of fabric uh give and then that way when it's moving it is going to create a perfect stitch for you so i'm going to i've trimmed my thread here and i'm going to leave the foot on there so that you can see and I'm just going to slide that off. You can see now my ribbon is sitting underneath. So rather than having to, we could have sewn this and then tried to thread the ribbon through. But why would we do that when we can just feed our ribbon through our foot and stitch it all on in one go? So I'll grab a little sample out here that I can show you that has 
the ribbon sequins foot in use. So you can see here on my width stitching, these ones here have a maroon kind of colored ribbon underneath. And I've got one style of stitch that does like little tiny stitches on the sides and then zigzags across. Okay, so that's these ones. And then these ones going across this direction are a narrower ribbon and a wider stitch. So if I hold that up a little bit, maybe on this one, you can see it a bit better. It jumps off quite a fair bit onto the side of the fabric here. And my little ribbon is just sitting in underneath. So that's got the two different widths of the narrow and the wide. And that was all I used on this one. I didn't have a medium. <laughs> okay. So that's your ribbon and sequins. Uh, it does, the, the sequins of course is for sequins. So if you do a lot of dance wear and things like that. Now the next one that I'm going to show you is the circular sewing attachment. Where's my F foot here? So I'm going to just attach my F foot for this one. And again, I've got a piece of fabric with stabilizer on the back of it. This circular sewing attachment, because it attaches over your bobbin cover, so we have, normally we wouldn't have it taped together. I've got it taped together so I didn't lose this little screw today. So I've got a little screw and I have the attachment. Okay, looks a little bit funny. This attachment is going to place over our bobbin cover right here. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're threaded with the colour you'd like in the bottom and the colour you'd like in the top. So for this one, I'm actually going to change to bobbin fill in my bottom and I'm going to put an embroidery thread on top. So just a finer thread. I had previously been sewing with just a standard uh, piecing or quilting thread. So now I'm going to change over and do some decorative with a finer. And also it has a shine with the embroidery threads. So let's, let's put a red onto there so you can really see it. Oh, let's take that thread off. So I'm just quickly going to thread the machine and it's literally seconds. Oops. <laughs> if I thread it correctly. There we go. Just lock my screen, use my needle threader, unlock my screen. Now I am using my zigzag needle plate on all of the work we're doing today because the zigzag needle plate has the opening, the nine mil or the seven mil opening. We're removing the bobbin cover and the circular sewer has this section here. Oops, let's move back into screen. This section here that moves along this arm. So this arm has inches marked on the bottom and centimeters marked on the top. And then as we push this little lever here down, this slides across left and right, and we can set to the width, to the diameter we would like of our circle, okay? So sometimes you might wanna move it out of the way so that you can get the attachment onto the machine and then pop it into the size you'd like. So we take that, and we just lay this down on our surface. And I put my, oh, there's my screw. I put my screw on sticky tape so I didn't lose it and then stuck it on a gray fabric. So we're going to pop this screw. When we place this attachment on, the screw is on this side uh, in a hole on our needle plate and your machine will already have that hole, okay? And depending on the model of your machine will depend on what circular sewing attachment you use. So there are a couple of different ones because this part, this bobbin cover part, will change on different people's machines. All right. Now, we take our fabric with our stabilizer and under this little black plastic part here, when we pop this off, this is a sharp little pin, okay? So when we put this little pin, you need to be careful that you don't catch yourself, okay? So I place my fabric over and I might just turn this light off for a second so that you can see this a bit better. 
no, that's the wrong one. There we go. So the pin is just here. When I pop this down, okay, you can see my pin. I'm going to pop my little cover back on top, just like that. And then as I actually sew, this is going to pivot around this pin. Okay, so this is where, when you're sewing around this circle, you want to make sure that this little part is staying down nice and firm and you don't want to push or pull at your fabric. Otherwise, your circle isn't going to be as circle. So let's change back to the screen and we're going to pick up a, I'm going to pick a little serpentine stitch. So something like this little snake one. Okay. And we're going to drop our foot down just like this. Uh, I'll change camera actually. So there we go. You can see that one better. So I'm going to hold my thread when I very first start and I'm going to basically watch this area. So all in front here is basically where we want to make sure that our fabric is feeding through nicely. Now, if we had a, a larger quilt, we may want to support it up on top of our extension table. So I've got an extension table on here at the moment, even though I've only got a smaller piece of fabric, but I'm just going to allow the machine to start stitching and pivoting around. Now you may want to stop and on some machines, you have this pivot icon. So if I flick back again, this little icon here drops your needle and lifts your foot. If you don't have something like this icon, you could maybe use your knee lift or alternatively, you'll lift your little presser foot. Okay. So as you work, we're going to stitch around and you'll stop occasionally just to allow the fabric to relax back in again before you go again. Now, in some cases as well, you may like to adjust your foot pressure on the machine. Now, this may be located in a couple of different places. On this machine, it's in my screen. So I can go ahead and reduce my foot pressure. Some people's machines, it might be in the top and some people's, it might be in a little door on the side. So we're just going to allow this to feed around in the circle. And I just, if I change back to this other camera here, I just massage this out of the way. And I always make sure that this little pin or this little plastic is popped down on my pin. So I just massage around and it'll look like it's kind of puckering a little bit to begin with. And just make sure that that's pushed down again. Okay, and you can complete as much of a circle as, as you like. If you wanted to stop at that point and just have a semicircle on your fabric, that's completely fine as well. You don't need to finish around to a full circle just because it's a circular sewer. So I'm just going to, I pick quite an open stitch so that it stitches a little bit faster. I lost my fabric off the back there. And depending on the stitch, you may need to stop a little bit more regularly. I'm just going to trim this thread as well now that it's back in front of me here. Like that. All right, so I'm just gently moving that out of the way, allowing the foot to move on my fabric. And then when I get back to my beginning, so my stitch is touching each other again. Hasn't matched up at the exact point, but that's okay. I'm going to come back across there with a different stitch. So I want it to stop immediately now. I'm going to use my reverse button, press that once, and it's now going to do an immediate lock off. So I'm not going to continue stitching. And I can pick up my pin, pick up my fabric, move the point to somewhere else. Move that across. So I'm just then going to line up there. And in this one's case, it's going to stitch off the edge of my fabric. So if I change back here, you can see it's going to stitch off of my fabric. So I'm actually going to start over on this side this time. And I will select a different stitch. So we have something different. Let's have a quick look. There's so many stitches. I, I Let's do a wiggly stitch like this one. 
I like a lot of the serpentine stitches. Oh, can you see them from back there? Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. And I'm stitching around again. Just stopping as you need to. Now you do want to make sure with this, with the circular sewer, that you have got a stabilizer on the back. So as I said before, you can see there the stabilizer. You've got stabilizer under the back of your fabric. And the machine is just feeding that through. Make sure this is popped down and continue. Now you could use this for applique as well if you are appliquing some circles. You could stitch the straight line down first, then come back and stitch down the fabric and then come back and do a decorative stitch. So really the circular sewer you can use in a lot of different functions. I have made a fish quilt before and used the circular sewing attachment to make bubbles out of the fish's mouth as my quilting lines. Okay. So it's just a lot more helpful than trying to actually sew a circle. I'm just pivoting around that point. And you can see here now where my line didn't quite stitch together, I've stitched over that and it's perfect. It's disappeared into there. Yeah, perfect. Uh, about can we vary the size? Yep. Yeah. So adjustment that you showed us. Uh, let me change back to this. So you can adjust the size of the circle with this arm here. Yep. So if I get back to the beginning and I don't change my pinhole here, So if I wanted to make this circle then bigger, so I had the same shape, but just larger, I would now take this, and I'll just fold this out of the way for you to see. I would now take this, flip this little arm, so this part here, slide this further away and lock that back into position. So that my circle would then be roughly about an inch and a half away from my previously sewn line. And I'd end up with the same. So I'd end up with like concentric circles working its way around. Okay, so that is your circular sewer. It is going to sew circles. Now, the next one we have. Excellent. Good idea. So I'm going to change this and Peter is going to show there. So this is some other work we've done with the circular sewer and a thicker stitch. So this is a quilting thread still, but the stitch stitches over itself multiple times and it's given us quite a hand looked work rather than it being just a stitch like I had previously completed. We also have work such as these ones. So all of these, so this is where we set the same center size and then each time we've just moved it out to create multiple sizes to our circle. We've appliqued a circle, so we've got the fabric, the satin stitch, and then a decorative stitch, and then multiple rows of straight and decorative. Okay. Good. Here we go. Cording. So the next one we're going to work with is our cording foot. And again, it's a clip on foot. And at the very front of our foot, we have little tiny guides running through there. Now these guides allow us to use thicker thread into the guide and it will stitch, the machine will stitch over the thread. So I take my long piece of thread or um, it could be like a crochet weight thread. Uh, Wonderful do some really nice thick threads these days. So I'm taking my first, I've got three cords here, taking my first cord, then I'm taking my second cord, and then I'm going to take my third cord. And you could do all three in the same, but again, for the visual, I am doing three, oops, three separate colored cords. And you'll notice I've left quite a lot out the back there. That's so that I can easily get the cords in and then I just pull the cords back towards myself. Sometimes you might choose to also tie these together 
uh, depending on what you're doing. You could tie them together there. All right, so I'll leave these out the back so you can see them. And I'm going to place my fabric underneath the bottom. And I'm going to use just a triple zigzag stitch. So this one is a fairly common stitch on a lot of machines. So it's usually based in your utility section. And I'm going to adjust mine now out to nine millimeters. So on my screen, let me flick across to, oh, Peter looks at that. I'm going to adjust on my screen out to nine. And there's a lot of different stitches you can use, but I like, or out to seven, sorry. I like that with this one, we can use just a common, normally I would use a triple zigzag maybe to attach elastic or something like that. I'm now going to, so you can see my three little grooves, my cord is stitched in, uh, placed through my cord uh, grooves and comes out the back. And then the stitch is actually going to stitch just gently over and the cords are being fed into here. I just hold them slightly off the fabric so that they don't drag. And you can see coming out the back there, the cords have been stitched down and you can see that high contrast thread. Again, you might choose to do the high contrast thread as a decorative embellishment, or you might choose to match your thread. Okay, and I've got a couple of examples that I can show you of this. Now, once I get to the opposite side, I'm just going to lock off. So I've just popped my reverse and it's locked. Now I'm trimming. Now, of course, I can't pull away with this. So I just need to pull the cords out the back. Now, again, I'm going to leave them attached to the foot so that I can bring it over. Where is my camera? <laughs> So I've got my cords. You can see the cords coming through the top of the foot. And if I flip this foot backwards, you can see that they whoop, you can see that they feed under the bottom and there's little tiny grooves in there. So they're feeding under these little tiny grooves. That's how they're keeping nice and straight and giving you that finish. Okay. So an example, whoop, what do we got on our screen, Peter? So an example of using the cording foot with your border guide foot is something like this one. So the cording runs a blue down the center and a brown on either side. And then we have the big, the, the blue decorative stitches down either side that you can use your border guide foot to create these ones in the same width apart. Okay, so that's another example. As well as, I've got one more here that's got the cording. So it's got the the glitzy kind of cord down the center and then a solid cord on either side with the zigzag stitch going over. Also has circular sewer. Okay, so a lot of these decorative feet can be used together to work with. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna pop that onto the side. And I'm going to show you, I've got a, oh, where did my sticky tape go? There we go. It's going to stick my screw down so I don't lose it. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of work with creating your own stitches from the stitches on the machine. Okay. So creating pattern combinations is what we're going to do. Now this one is a pattern that you will be able to get as a bonus from your retailer after today. So creating all of this and embellishing, but for the moment, I'm going to show you on screen how easily you can combine multiple stitches together before you sew them out onto something like this one. So I will select from my play stitches. And at the moment, you can see I have a whole row of umbrellas. But if I don't necessarily want a whole row of umbrellas, I might want to combine some of these stitches together. So I have a stitch combination icon. 
right here. And again, this will be the same icon on a lot of machines. So it'll look something like a matching row of hearts or the same shape. And then a, the other half of it shows you a combination of different. So this one's got a heart, a spade and a diamond. So that's showing my, my pattern combination and my stitch disappeared. Okay. So I'm now going to pop in these little love hearts. And I can scroll through to another page of designs and I can pop in a different stitch. All right, so I'm gonna scroll through until I find something I might like a little leaf. So let's have a quick, who would have thought my leaf would be as far as this? There we go. No, I don't like that one. So I can delete that one out of the, the group and we will put this one. So many stitches to choose from. I know, so many stitches. And then you could put this one and then you could put this one. Okay. So you can create your own style of stitch. If we then decided actually we don't like that first one, we can scroll back up the stitches and delete that stitch. Okay. So it's a very easy thing to do. Once we then delete, we're left with what we would like to work with and we can start to sew. Now I'm just going to pop my F foot. So it's telling me I need my F foot on my machine. So I'm going to pop my F foot on and I'm not going to sew with red thread on this gorgeous piece. I am going to grab a green thread. I've got a green right here. So I'll stitch down with a green and oh, I've got to take my ring off. And really quickly again. And if you have a, even though I'm on a, the continental at the moment, a lot of our machines thread in the exact same way. So if you are looking at maybe getting a new Janome, you don't need to panic about some simple things such as the threading or the bobbin winding. A lot of those techniques are the same across all of our models. We try to keep them all similar. All right, so I'm now ready. I've now selected my stitch and I haven't put in a little lock off. So I want my stitch to just keep repeating itself rather than if I only wanted just the two, I could put my lock and it would just complete two and stop. All right. So let's flick back to this camera and we'll do the stitch maybe on this little one over here so that we can see it quite well. Maybe on this one, actually, this will show now on my F foot, I have got a little tiny red triangle on the front of the foot. So this little triangle is actually showing, showing me my center drop for the stitch. So I'm going to line up this previously sewn stitch with that red triangle. On camera, it doesn't look like I'm quite lined up at the minute, but if I drop down, this here is lined up. This little triangle is lined up exactly with this row. So I'll just take my thread over, hold it out to the side here, and I'm going to start stitching. And with this machine, I can feel my feed dogs come up. So when I actually put this fabric, which has a number of layers underneath of there, when I've popped my fabric under, nothing caught, and I was able to just start stitching it picked up and connected with my fabric and moved straight away and you can see the stitch coming out if I change over to number one there we go I can change I can see the stitch coming out you can see there's large swirls and small swirls and again on the end of this stitch rather than running off the edge of my fabric I'm just going to do my reverse button just at the very edge and trim Okay, and there's my little row of stitching. All right. Now, another thing that we also have on our machines that can help with your decorative stitching or that you may not be aware of how to use is stitch elongation. So I'll flip back to here and set up for a elongated stitch. Now, an elongated stitch you can use to do a lot of different techniques. I'll set up for a stitch and then I will show you. So we're going to go back into our stitch options. We're going to go into our satin stitching and we're going to disappear the 
pattern combination. And I'm going to, at the minute, turn off my complete combination just so that you can see what's going to happen. So I'm going to select just this one little oval shaped satin and I'm going to go into my adjustments. Now you can see here we have the width, the length. This little one here is a new icon that's showing up in this window. And this one is the elongation. So if I start pressing that, see how I had four and a half ovals. Now I have three. Now I have two. So I can actually combine these by selecting one and selecting the same stitch again, but going back just on this one and increasing its size. Okay, then I can come back and select Oops, let me move down. I'm just going to go back and I deleted the stitch I wanted to leave there. So I've got a small stitch, a three time elongated stitch, and then the single stitch again. All right, then I'm going to start to stitch this one. So I'll show you here the same thing on this one here, but with the diamond stitch. So we've got a single, a double elongation, and then a triple. And we've actually used that to create a flower. Then we've got this same, the stitch here as the center is the same as this one here. We've just put more around the center, less around the center. Then you can see some of the leaves through here are longer but if I move to the end, they start out with singles, then doubles on this, triples, and all the way down to five times the elongation. So in every single one of these satin stitches, you have up to five stitches in one, just depending on how you want to use it. Then you can use little, oh, there was one already up here, little tiny stitch of one, two, and three to make things like a little bee or a little spider down here. Okay, so it's just a creative thing. So I'll start stitching so that you can see this one. And let's stitch it on this one over here. Trying to work out ones that we can do so that we've got a high contrast for you to see. So again, I'm lining up with the, the line on my center marking. I'm going to lower my foot down. Now, also with the pivot machines, if I just put my foot straight on the foot control, the foot would automatically drop my foot the, down and start sewing. If you're trying to line up though, which is what I was doing there, then sometimes that's why you would prefer to manually drop the foot down with the button. Uh, you could also use your knee lift if you have your knee lift plugged in. So you have a lot of different options for that. Then we're going to start stitching. So with the satin stitches, I like to let the machine feed the fabric through. I'm definitely not pushing it through. I do leave a little bit of a bubble in front here. So when I leave a little bit of a bubble here, it means that the, the fabric isn't trying to pull its way through. It's got a little bit of fabric here that it can evenly move and I don't need to worry. I veered a little bit off, so I was talking and not watching. And if you watch up in the little screen in the corner, this screen is changing as it's showing what stitch I'm stitching. So it's showing at the moment that I'm sewing the first stitch. Now it's just changed over to the second long stitch. And then when I get to the end of this stitch, it'll change to the third and then repeat its way around. So if your machine doesn't have things like this, you may still have memory function. You may still have elongation. Now I'm getting close to the end of my stitching here. So I'm just going to pop my reverse before I run into the next intersection. And you can see it's come out the back there. If I slide out, you can see I have the single, the triple, single, single, triple, single, single. All right. So that is your stitch elongation. What else would you like to show? Um, just trying to think. Oh, 
that's the last one that we have. Let me grab a little fabric out so I can hide the, so I can highlight, sorry. So the other thing, the last thing that I've got on my list here is the F and the F2 feet. So I've been using just now the F foot, which is the clear, and there has that little tiny red triangle in the middle here, and it's got the F at the back. The other version to this, which if you're doing things like applique maybe, or if you've marked out particular areas that you want to stitch on, your F2 removes any plastic from the front. So if I hold the two together, both of them have the plastic on the outer, so you can see through the foot quite well. They also both have a little area underneath. So if you have an F foot currently and you have your A foot, turn both of those over and feel underneath, okay? Underneath of your F foot, it actually has this groove. So when the F foot sits on top of your decorative stitches, it doesn't push and pull at the decorative, it will just glide over the decorative stitch. Whereas if you use your A foot, it may push at the fabric and stitch and it could distort it. So that's why when you change over to your decorative stitching, your F foot is always suggested. When you're doing standard sewing, maybe piecing together a garment or doing a hem or something like that, your A foot is suggested because then you have most contact with your fabric. Okay, so both the F and the F2 have this lovely little gully that goes underneath so your stitches can glide through, but they have one that is missing the plastic in the front for full visibility and the other just having this one little marking and the plastic there for you. So both of them can do the same things or different things just depending on your preference. Whoops. So thank you for attending today, everybody. I hope that you have learnt something new or uh, a little bit more information about your machines. And any information that you would like, contact your local retailer about today. We will, as I said, have an information sheet and this lovely project for you that you can get from them. And on behalf of Genomi Australia, thank you very much for attending.